The girls and I are getting ready to go do evening chores. We're gonna take you along this weekend for a adventure that we're doing. So we're heading to, if you listen to my podcast, episode 46, I interviewed the date lady. And uh, if you haven't listened to that, you can go check it out. But she ta told me in it about them having a micro cafe down in Springfield. And I, after she said it, I was like, we really need to go see that. Well, we weren't, that's not what we were planning to do for this little adventure, but it is where we can sort of go on the route there. And so we're gonna make a whole trip of it. We're gonna stay at Airbnb. We're going to go where Laura Ingalls wrote the Little House books. So that's all something I thought would be fun to take you along with. But first, I want you to meet our newest little three quarters Nubian, one quarter boar goat named Snowflake. Snowflake. If you remember that whenever my friend Stephanie brought our goat Jenny, the one that we milk, she brought a hooved companion for her, Blair. Well, Blair was expecting in August and whenever we got Bessie, I told Stephanie she could come get Blair because we no longer needed the hook companion. And then I got to thinking about it and I asked her if she was planning on selling Blair and she said she was. And so long story short, we decided to buy Blair. And days after that, Blair had her baby, I, I guess a little bit early, um, if she was due in August. And she had her in July. So I'm gonna introduce you to her. She's adorable. Okay, it's been a while since you've seen Jenny's kids. They're of course massive. I mean, this one here is like as big as Jenny. Not really, <laughs> but, she, but he's really big. That's your little snowflake. I think her mommy's gonna come like, what are you doing? Hi, snowflake, are you already scared of me? If you compare her to the other Oh, you're so sweet. Like Nubians. I think this is typical of Nubians. I don't know a whole lot about goats, but they have long, long legs. So she looks to me like when I first saw her out here in the barn after Blair had her, I thought it looked like she was walking on stilts. It just, she looks, her legs just look too long for her body, but it's adorable. And then of course she has her long floppy ears. And this is her mother here. This is Blair. Bot is so much bigger than Dixie and Baba. He's so cute, but you are the cutest snowflake. We came home Sunday, we'd been, oh, here comes mother to say, what are you doing with my baby? We came home Sunday from being at my parents at the swimming hole and the girls were doing chores and then they came in and said, mom, we need to come show you a surprise. And I knew instantly what it was. I thought maybe she would have twins, but she just had one and she's a girl. And it, it went really well. She was dry whenever we got home, so that was good. It was a lot less nerve-wracking having the kids come or having a kid in July versus April because it was so cold when Jenny had her triplets. I was really worried about them. This time, of course, it was just nice and easy. And I plan to start milking Blair in two weeks and then I'll be milking two goats. So hopefully I'll be getting about a half gallon a day. Look how cute she is. Okay, I gotta so cute. put the baby in. She's almost all white with a little black <laughs> around her little eyes. Her That's so cute. She can use her legs pretty good. Those Look stilts. Like this one is compared. Like when you hold, when you see me holding this one. Look at her. She can really get around so good. We're gonna show her out here. There's Snowflake. You're gonna eat my shirt. I like to eat shirts. Give you back to your mother. This is a boring school, mom. Yeah. It, it, it was a boar school. Oh. <laughs> boar school. It's a boar school. A boar. Boar scoring. It's a boring school. But it's a boar school. First leg of the trip is, I guess, kind of homeschooling related. We're gonna look at this Whoa. rock museum. Wait, this is the whole world. Museum. I don't want to eat. No, I'm not wearing a mask. I've got the whole world. You don't wear a mask on here? You're supposed to. 
I know. <laughs> Look at those teeth. Whoa. That is cool looking. Look at Whoa. those teeth. That would have been a pretty cool find. Micah, show me what you got. This is like a homeschooling thing for us. Each kid got a different pack of hey, I've got a, these um, like flash card or trading cards, flash cards. I wonder if we could trade Micah's. You no, know, her job is like going to the woods and trying to take her injured animals. And it's my job. And um, she and Trell. Yep. It's definitely Mike. out of. Mike, it's me. not fresh. No, that won't be as good. There's another one. It's already picked. Let's just leave it because it actually no, it doesn't smell good. It's it's it, it's old. It should smell fruity. Not good anymore. Hey Jude, don't, don't. Because I'm afraid of you guys falling. It's raining a lot. Can I look? It's pretty. Okay, when I had the date lady on my podcast, I had several requests for if we did come to her micro cafe to vlog it. So that's what I'm going to do. Micah got a chocolate date shake. Mike, is it good? Is it delicious? Yeah, yeah. Alright, we just we found this little farm park place to come play for a while. We're gonna meet up with Luke's brother and his wife. She moved. Oh she here now? There's one that looks exactly like her. Oh cool. Well, we could uh practice. Wow. -uh. <laughs> wow. Cow. So they put stuff that like chicks like down in there and then I suppose and then they grow it like an herb make, garden or something And then maybe it also promotes like insects, you know, to be able to in be insecty in there <laughs> Be all insectish and, like, live. What are the trees? It's just just for shade. No, but they're really kind of neat. What's that? Turkey? Let's go look at the Holsteins. Now, I don't know, is that other one a Guernsey? Exploring little Missouri town squares is Probably one of our top favorite things to do. Random Missouri towns. I can find lots of cool random stuff. Yep, antique shops, farmer's market. This is cute.
The level of randomness here. What? I said the, the level of randomness here. Why is the snow going all Pretty hot. <laughs> This is a really pretty swimming hole. Whoa, yeah. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> Daniel! Daniel! What do you think? That is deep. Wow, this is such a nice swimming hole. Hey, buddy. Do you like it or is it too cold? It's not a very hot day, is it? Ruthie's fine with it. Ruthie, I don't know how you can stand it. It is so cold. All right, here goes dad. Who's next? This is Lara and Almanzo's house they lived in till they died, correct? Yeah, it's been 40 years, really. And she wrote all the books. So when was this house built, do you know? Um, so they left Dakota Territory while to get here. Yeah, I know this and house then was they built building. an addition. This front section right here is the addition. Okay. In the early 1900s when the farm was doing better. I first bought the farm, uh, it was a log cabin that was just on the land and a bunch of baby apple trees. And this whole front section is what Almanzo built later when the farm was doing Do it. better. Okay. Wait a second. So um, Almanzo built all of this. Yeah, yeah Almanzo can... built all of this. But I love how the back goes down. Yeah. So like, okay, so right here, so you see that kind of, this part is uh -huh. the original farmhouse. Okay. So yeah, it is. And that. So that would be like the summer kitchen, I think. He built this whole section on when they started doing, doing well. Then, so this house would be similar in age to your house? Yes. Yeah. Well, I guess and mine. It's a different well, style, though. Older. Yeah, okay. So this, I think, this style, national style. It seems to me from the inside that they have it decorated like how she would have most recently, which would yes. have been like a mid-century style. Yes. They moved over here, or they never really did. Yeah, they did. They lived here for a little bit. Um, like, till they, several years. till they died then? No. And they moved back to their old they, house? They, on the way home, every time they would come home, they would drive by their old house. And they just kind of lived here to, like... Make Rose happy. Huh. She spent a ton of money. Yeah. She made it all like, state of the art. She wanted to spoil her parents because that farmhouse didn't have like indoor plumbing or anything. Or like, no, I think it had running water, but it didn't. They lived here for a couple years. They would drive past their white farmhouse and be like, oh. I think they might even have lived here like 10 years. And then they, it's so darling though, okay? It really is. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah, so clearly they. You know, it, somebody had, had a vision and... A lot of money. Uh-huh. I think she bought the furniture got home late last night and I totally didn't close this vlog out but hope you enjoyed our weekend trip of checking out Missouri rivers and visiting a few antique shops and then Laura Ingalls home where she wrote all of her books later in life it's pretty cool um, I think that there was some audio that you could catch what was actually going on but I met up with my friend Sarah Jo from Briarton Farm. If you follow her over on Instagram or here on YouTube, you know her. Um, but she was explaining a lot of the history because she knows more about that 
um, that the first house we went to was what Almanzo actually built from everything on the property. And then the stone house was what Rose built, Rose's Laura and Almanzo's daughter. Later, um, whenever she made a lot of money from her books for her parents, and then they ultimately moved back to the other farmhouse. So hopefully you're able to catch some of that history from the audio there, but. All right, well, thank you so much for following along on our little weekend trip and eating snowflake, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.